James William Tipcombe. I was married in 1966. People always ask me the, the burning question, what's about the draft? Kenneth thought it was my canum, our canum son. That's <laughs> okay. my uh, uh, affinity for ice cream. It's hard to talk about them without getting emotional, but uh, people I really loved, they loved me. You don't have to have the whole family come in, just treat them like you got the family. I loved uh, riding my bicycle, and then later on the motor scooter. I could list at least 100 girls I'd taken rides on. They loved that. <laughs> I was born in Dayton, Ohio, on January 3rd, 1944. I was the second child, and uh, my brother's deceased and my sister's deceased. I had another one in Teleco Village, and she's just down here, and just recently moved. So. I have uh, four children. We have four children. Uh, uh, Kenneth, Andrea, Justin, who's married to Angela, and then there's Candace, who's married to John. <laughs> well, I rode my bicycle. Loved to ride my bicycle. And then later on, a motor scooter. When my dad and parents helped me get a motor scooter. They had a 14-year-old law. And then, uh, I got, of course, I got to ride that everywhere. And I did. I, I worked on the farms, the local farm. Lester Huff was his name. He since died, but... Uh, very wealthy and respected the guy in the community. He farmed 400 acres, which is a big farm in Ohio. Most of them are 60 acres. Whole area is divided into 60 acres. But uh, they, I forget why it got to be that. But uh, he wanted to make as much money as he could, so he did that. Uh, but I got to drive the a combine, which was a very new experience. Guys were in awe. I got to drive this new John Deere. Uh, uh, they paid cash for it. $10,000. He is a fine, fine man. And uh, I never heard him preach a sermon, but he really preached it, you know, how he behaved. He, he never, he was just a fine person. And that's, that was my model. West Pelton is a town, and the Union Township was a, that's how they combined it. When they were conglomerating all these one house school, one room schoolhouses, they called it Milton Union. It was the only way they could get Kind of a political thing. I graduated from Melton Union High School in 1962. I got a job uh, working in an ice cream store. Looks like Shearer's, and then they pronounce it Shears. Hence my uh, uh, affinity for ice cream. We made really good ice cream. We sold 50 flavors, and then they've been life lifelong friends. Wonderful people. Uh, 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 it's hard to talk about them without getting emotional, but uh, I got to do their funerals. People I really loved, they loved me. I went to Wright State University, which was right there in Dayton, to run my grade average up. And I wanted to get into graduate school. I couldn't have gotten in with what I had. I barely had a two point. And then uh, uh, I, I graduated and, and I, had, I was in the academic honors uh, fraternity which is pretty good. I made Dean's List all, all the time I was at Wright State. So that was real good. Yeah. And then I uh, qualified then to, in, in the University of Louisville. So we went there for a year. Then uh, and that, I had, that was a good, really good experience. My field placement, which would be like an internship, uh, was with Wayne Oates. If you, you don't know that name, but, but he was a guy who's written uh, like 25 textbooks on pastoral counseling. And a very good guy. It was really, really an honor to be able to work with him. Then uh, he became professor of psychiatry at, at medical school. So I thought that was interesting. I did my thesis on uh, the use of family therapy and the treatment of alcoholism. That has been with me all these years. I've been, you know, look at it. You don't have to have the whole family come in. Just treat them like you got the family there. Because if you change one person in the family, that upsets the whole basket. I, I became a, uh, a clinical instructor for the Department of Psychiatry at Medical School at Wright State. I got to teach residents how to do group therapy. That was fun to do. We had some meetings. You know, I called everybody professor. <laughs> that was fun to be called professor. <laughs> and I taught... I taught uh, uh, the development of social welfare programs in the United States at Edison State, or I shouldn't say it that way, uh, Indiana University East at Richmond. 
which are on the border of Ohio and uh, Indiana. And I could drive there, it was easy to do. And then uh, there's another little community college called Edison State. And I taught psychology there, the introduction. So I joined a fr uh, service for today, Sigma Theta Epsilon, became the president of it eventually. And then uh, uh, I just guess I'm destined for leadership. <laughs> People always ask me the, the burning question, what's about the draft? And interestingly enough, I enlisted, knowing that I was not going to be uh, free anymore. And then, uh, and then when I was in basic training, I got my draft notice. <laughs> and then and in the service, uh, I did very well. Uh, basic training, I sailed through, no, no problems. Got E2, and anyone who's a veteran will know what that means. You got E2 right off basic training which meant I, my next uh, you know, uh, step would be E3. Got that as soon as I got to my permanent station, uh, Fort Belvoir, Virginia. Uh, working in a mental hy hygiene clinic, I walk into a very nice air-conditioned office <laughs> just outside of D.C. Fort Belvoir is the uh, engineering center of the Army, or one of them. They're, they're combat engineers. Their, their uh, job is to make bridges on one side of the river, flip it over, to, down to the head the other side. That was their job. They were people who learned to drive uh, graders and all that, bulldozers. And then, so that became a really good experience, seeing all these guys would come in, they'd be all grubby, you know, from, from the field, and they'd be working, of course, on desks and all that. And, and then they'd apologize for that. and said, no, don't do that. So, you know, just come in the way you are. So, uh, anyway, that got to be really interesting work. And we'd make uh, visits to units. You know, I, I want to go out and see this, meet this, this uh, CEO. You know, it sounds like it be the, it looked like the, the, the teachers that the kids would talk about in their grade school. <laughs> they weren't quite as bad as all that. So some of these guys were really good guys. They, they really were. And then I was glad to meet them. I had a guy named him, Captain Cool. <laughs> he really was cool. <laughs> uh, but uh, the, I got sent then. I didn't want to do it. I tried not to, you know, I tried to get out of it. Sent to NCO Academy, Non-Commissioned Officers Academy, which was like a little West Point. And I didn't want to do that, but I get there. It's kind of funny. Hey, where they said the first commission, you know, formation would be full dress uniform. So I get up there, I got one little ribbon. National Defense Ribbon. And the, the sergeant come by, he says, they would call her by sergeants in there, and there. He says, Sergeant, did you get the memo? What I said, what the dress one was? I said, yes, sir, and was sergeant. And uh, so this is all I have. He said, how long have you been in the service? I said, about 13 months. He just kind of shook his head. <laughs> because some people really tried to get into those places. You couldn't advance very far. And then... Uh, 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 what bothered me, they said, if you can graduate in top 20% top of the class, about everybody gets an E6 uh, status, which is uh, sergeant stripes. And then uh, my hospital commander refused to do that. I, didn't, I never talked to him about it, but he even made it. No, I won't, on first enlistment, no one's going to get an E6. He's a guy who spent 18 years as a full bird colonel. Always wanted to become general, never did. Yeah, for Colonel Cardona, so never forget him. Suzanne's from a little town in Ohio called Arcanum. It's an Indian name. I don't know what it means. Forget she could tell you. But Arcanum is, uh, uh, Kenneth thought it was my Canum. Arcanum, so, <laughs> okay. so uh, anyway, it's the only one in the nation by that name. So. It's interesting. As I say, it's a very nice, long, long story, very romantic. Uh, met her, uh, saw her, she was at a youth conference, and she was one of the registration people. I came in there with my date, which was, you know, not a good thing, but we didn't know each other, but she wanted to know who I was. And then uh, several years later, well, we got, both got sent by our churches to go to a youth conference out in Denver. We met on the, the charter bus, so we, we started sitting together. Which is kind of nice. We spent all the week together in uh, Colorado. And uh, of course, we went there on vacation not long ago. It's kind of fun. Uh, 20, uh, 20 years later. <laughs>
we spent the whole week together out in Colorado. Then, uh, and then I lost track of her for a long time. And then she came into the ice cream store. She knew after we worked. And then she said she's going to know you, which I thought was interesting. So I never left her after that. Uh, we, I went down and saw her the first day I was there. I mean, literally, 20 minutes. I was down to the dorm. Knew exactly where it was, of course. And then uh, we never, we spent every day together, except in classes. And then uh, I'd, I'd walk her to class occasionally, to her natatorium, and she took swimming. She was a phys ed major. So we got engaged that spring, following spring. And then uh, we were going to get married. And then uh, the draft came along, so uh, I got into that in the military. And then uh, got sent to Fort Belfort. And our oldest child was born, our first, oldest, first children, two of them, were born in an army hospital. I thought it was interesting. There, my grandson, he didn't know she, my wife or his mother was born in a military hospital. He said, he said I never knew that. <laughs> 100, 100 people there, I think. You know. We were the only ones in town on that medic wedding day. <laughs> so it's Sunday afternoon. So. Well, very, very nervous. <laughs> uh, my uh, shears uh, stood up for, for me. So that was very emotional. Uh, yeah, it was a very nice uh, honeymoon. Drove to Cumberland Falls, if you know where that is in Kentucky. Yeah. Fun trip, but uh, we were poor as church mice, and uh, more about that later on. What was it like being a new dad? Uh, scary. It really was. I mean, I did, you know, I was like those songs about guys feeling they could break the child. That's just the way I felt, too. <laughs> we were at a friend's house, and, and she her water broke. And so I said, what do I do now? I didn't know what to do. And the people said, well, we call an ambulance. So we did. Uh, Van Dorn ambulance. So, uh, anyway, they rushed her to the military hospital. And, and that was it. So we didn't have a crib for him. He was early. And when he had a crib, he slept in a, a trunk tray on top of a foot locker. <laughs> yeah, we did foster care. Zoo. <laughs> That's the best way I can you know, to describe it. And we took newborns, and that's how we that's how we got Candy. She was five days old when we got her, and stayed with us for a year, and because we helped her walk and all this. And yeah, we moved to Odessa in '85. Uh, moved here because we vacationed down here, kept pulling that cruiser down this way, and then I got tired of that. And I, we were out cruising one evening. I saw this guy come home. For, it looked like he came home from work. And a few minutes later, there he is out casting the shore. I thought, that's what I want to do. So, so that's, I really made Tennessee look good. So. Uh, out on the uh, Warrior Trail, if you know where that is. Uh, it's exactly a mile from the marina, which was you know, good, good information for me. <laughs> Kept the boat docked there, a cruiser docked there for about 30 years. Excellent uh, neighbors, and we all get together for the ball games and all that. Had you know, great party time. So, and then uh, occasionally people would over drink, but uh, uh, not too much. But it was always a good group. So, yeah, yeah we never really missed them when we moved here. So, Dick and Sharon Hammett were uh, really good people. You've met them. I think they were at the wedding uh, reception at, at, uh, at Justin's house. You know, and very nice people. Jay and Randy. He guy who uh, had a business called Varmint Busters. Uh, follow, following the Ghostbusters thing, he thought, that's I could name my business. So the Canada started running track, cross country, which is what I did in high school. And then uh, uh, Justin wanted to play soccer, and he's very good at it. And he, he thought about getting that uh, scholarship to college on soccer. So, but he ended up having a hip replacement which was right in his junior year. He, he dropped out of school for that little bit. But kind of, kind of funny thing, like God had a, a plan for him. Uh, and then uh, uh, we had a long time wait. And this older couple learned that her to her over talking. He volunteered. We didn't know it. it was, but uh, we got a call from Vanderbilt. No one in town would do that surgery. They was too young for that. They weren't going to do it. But they said someone at Vanderbilt might do it. So we didn't have any trouble with Vander, but, but met really nice people. And this older people, he said, I don't need to have the surgery. He said, let that guy go. So we got a call from him. So, so that really worked out.
fight. It was like he was supposed to have it. So, so he only lived a uh, semester of school because of that. So he graduated with Peyton Manning. But, but uh, I like to, well, let me say it right now. Uh, yeah, we had some wonderful trips to Canada and then, and then out on Fort Loudoun. And then, uh, you know, we had an interesting experience like Justin got that heron. <laughs> That's a floating uh, lure, and which meant it was obviously uh, visible. And this heron was up there on top of the tree. He saw it down there, just dove for it. <laughs> and Justin hollered. He said, I've got this thing. I said, hang on to it. I could see the lure and him gone. So uh, they were really bent around. I was surprised how he could bend that thing. So, And then Justin, we all men, we got a lot of stories like that. And I had two churches, sometimes simultaneously, at Bethel up in Carnes and then uh, Grigsby Chapel. So I went between the two, and then uh, all the church people were good, really good, and they worked with me. We had to change hours and all this, you know, so I could drive, make the distance. It took a half hour to get from one church to the other. So uh, they worked with me very well, and then that got me too much. All that time I was working at Lakeshore, doing the admissions. And then uh, as a social worker, and then uh, of course doing that, and then have to come home in the evening and write my sermons out, and got to be, you know, too much after a while. So I told him I'd like Gregory Chapel was closest one, so so I, I did that. And great experience. Yeah. When I got there first Sunday, there were about twenty five people in there, and Candy came along and she says we're gonna have one hundred and twenty five, but we never got that far. But we got seventy five people in there every once in a while. Uh, the the choir director and I were became good friends, and I leaned over to her. I says, "There's 75 people out here." She says, "I wondered how many there were." So it got to be pretty good. I had the two churches a long time. Uh, one of the guys asked me. Uh, he asked Susan and I were sitting together the uh, dinner. He said to her, "He says, do we get the same sermon?" She says, "No, we get better one." She says, "I correct him." <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of an interesting uh, way I got in church. There was a little church close to our house called Highland Brethren in Christ Church. The women wore the bonnets, and the men wore the flat brimmed hats. And you know the, the, who would be the dunkers, we call them. And then, uh, and then, you know, there's there's a, a real rusticness to it. No no instruments, medical musical instruments. Everybody sang really well. We sang the old gospel songs. I've never lost that in simplicity. And all through the training I've had, I've never lost that. I just love it. I felt called into the ministry at the age of 16. Really went to that church because of more girls. <laughs> Awful to say, but I wanted to see what the girls were like. They were beautiful. <laughs> and I dated some of them, then I didn't. Uh, but I always felt called into the ministry. And then... Uh, I, all through my service time, I thought, well, someday I'm going to go, have to go to the ministry. Held all the jobs that you could have, a layperson could have in the church. Nothing would satisfy me. I became a leader of Stephen ministry, and then that didn't do it. Never felt that. I had satisfied that calling. And I felt over, over year after year, I felt like I'd be out there preaching. You know? And then uh, when I did that, I finally didn't have any more problems. I thought well, I'm doing what God wants me to do, and that was good, really good. What kind of music did you like when you were in high school? Oh, same thing I do now. Country yeah. music. Country music. Yeah. Who was okay. your favorite musician in high school? Like, who did you listen to? Johnny Cash. And the Statler was. Not in high school. No, not in high school. Because you, they, do, they weren't, they weren't around <laughs> right. when you were in That's high right. school. We saw, we saw the Statlers when Johnny Cash was at the Ohio State Fair. Yeah. And they were the, the lead group for him. We liked them so well, we thought we got to find out what they where they are. So. Right. Yeah. What's your favorite gospel song? Do you have one? Uh... I like it because he lives. Well, that's the fact. That's what we're gonna have everybody sing at the service. What is this? What are you planning? Service? Are you planning your funeral? Yeah. Why? Because I don't know how long it'll be. 
Well, none of us do. I know. But you sound like that's what you're doing right now. Well, I've already talked about it. Who? You better not have, because I don't want her. Why? <laughs> I don't. Well, I'll let you guys yes, discuss that later.